This session is going to cover the MyChair mobile app. We're going to look at the iOS version, uh, and in particular, we've got uh, several uh, aspects of the app, supervisor app and caseworker app you see here on the mobile screen, and we are going to look at the caseworker app. So I'm going to take a minute here just to log in, and this app interfaces directly with the SACWA system and also has offline capabilities, but I am going to log in here as a caseworker, and once I log in, the uh, case load for that particular worker is going to show with some particular features. You can see that the case names and certain detail have been redacted and this is the case load view. So this would be a list of the cases for my particular case load. Now, the first thing I want to look at is the GIS perspective. Uh, the upper right hand corner has a GIS uh, arrow that will be in several different screens but on this view it's going to plot me a GIS view of my cases. Now you can see I'm actually located up in Tampa and this particular caseload is in Miami, Florida. So you can see where I am in proximity of my caseload. As I zoom in, you can see not only uh, a marker that represents each case, but the color coding, which I'll talk about in just a minute, is also shown on the map itself. I can also tap a marker which will show me some case details and I can use uh, several buttons there, control buttons, the I to get me the case detail which we're going to look at again in a minute or the automobile which will route me a map to that case's location. Let's look at the color coding here for a second both at the case view and at the dependent view. The colors of green, red, and yellow are significant in that a green means that the case or that attribute is in compliance, the yellow means it's a warning and something is coming due, and the red means that something is late. Now I also want to look at the GIS view from the dependent perspective. When I select on the GIS marker in the upper right, I'm going to not only get proximity of where I am in these resources, but this is the resources that are in proximity of the case placement. You can see the red marker is the case uh, placement, and then the other markers surrounding it are uh, resources. As I tap them, I can see I've got the medical practitioner, I've got the school, I've got the dental practitioner, and whatever other attributes or resources are tied to this case could show up in this particular GIS view. Now, as I go back to the case, uh, the dependent view, this is the list of dependents in this particular case, I want to tap on an individual child to get the child view. So now as I have the child view, you can see at the top there's certain uh, demographics and the photo details. We're going to talk about that in more detail in just a few minutes. As I scroll down, I've got some details related to the goal information, placement type, case type, provider details, and again, this can vary depending on what the uh, information is that we want to push out to the field. As I scroll down here, I've got the indicators. You can see some are related to uh, education, the medical visits, uh, visits with the biological parents, face-to-face -face visits, whatever key indicators are here, and you can see the date of the last event and the color coding accordingly. As I scroll down, we've got contact details. Now as I scroll down, there's a couple things I want to point out. You can see here we've got various uh, options for forms. I've got two forms here, uh, face sheet detail, K-12 report card. This could be where you want to have the caseworker enter an assessment, a safety assessment, a family assessment. Uh, and then as I continue to scroll down, you can see we've got an example of integration with the school board. We've got some school details here. Um, you can see uh, as I navigate down into the course level detail of that school detail, we've got each individual grade, uh, course and grade level detail, attendance level detail, and so forth. These are daily feeds, critical for daily feeds, uh, not so much for the grades, but we can see patterns and trends of grades changing. We absolutely see uh, patterns and trends of attendance. We have alerts for attendance if there's unexcused attendance or things of that nature. Then as I go back, you can see there's this area uh, for the contact detail and the address, I can uh, tap the address, that will give me a GIS view. Perhaps I want to route a, uh, uh, create a route or map a uh, set of destinations to that location, to that case, to that placement or resource. And then I continue to navigate down, I can see case notes and we'll look at a couple things, how to create a case note and how to view case notes. Right now I will uh, tap a case note and I can see the detail. This is a case note uh, or one of the most recent case notes. I see the top probably 100 here. 
uh, and then perhaps I want to create a brand new case note. You can see here I have this button, this plus sign. I can tap that, and that will give me a form. Uh, and this gives me the required fields are shown in yellow, and I can start to navigate through and fill in the details that are required. And I can navigate through that, each, each field. And there's something here I want to show where, depending on how I answer or fill in certain fields, it might prompt me for additional information. By the way, when we enter narratives, uh, dictation also works if that's supported by the jurisdiction. The mobile app itself supports uh, speaking or dictation into narrative fields. You can see here when I selected yes, it prompted me for additional questions. I select yes, more fields than are required. So it's a smart uh, uh, form that allows you to construct a complete case note. These forms are modifiable at the back end so that if you wanted to add additional questions or business rules around the form or case note, that can be done on the back end without, without having to redistribute the app itself. Here you can see there's an option for showing additional optional uh, data entry, should that be desired. You can see some of the questions here. And once I'm complete, there's a couple things I can do. I can submit that to go directly back to the SACWA system. If I do not have a connection, I can save it to the device and sync with the SACWA system at a later time. Okay, let's wrap up this session by looking at how to manage photographs. Uh, you can see as I scroll to the top, I have this update photograph option. I can see the current photograph and perhaps now I'm at a home visit and I want to update the photo. So I can go down that option and there's a couple things you can see. I can take the photo, I have to confirm the location and only then can I submit that photograph to go back to the SACWA system. So when I hit the take photo, I get an opportunity to take the photo. I can zoom in, zoom out, change the perspective. When I'm happy, then I have to confirm the location. Okay, each photograph taken is always geocoded, so we know exactly where and when the photo was taken. But we give the caseworker the option to confirm and accept the location. So you can see here, I've taken the photograph, I've confirmed the location, and now I have the option to submit that photograph to the SACWA system. That concludes this session of MyChair's mobile app. Thank you.